Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Relationship-Based Care webinar series. I'm Tina Jimenez with the State Capacity Building Center Infant Toddler Specialist Network. We support systems and individuals working within states, territories, and tribes to enhance the quality of infant toddler care in early education settings. Before we get started today, I'd like to invite my colleagues and my co-presenters to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Julie Law. I'm excited to be here with you today. Hello, everyone. This is Rana Schaefer, and I, too, am really glad to be back with you. Now, as always, we invite you to make yourself comfortable and enjoy this exploration of the relationship-based care practice of continuity of care. The purpose of this webinar series is to increase your understanding of how the PITC's relationship-based care framework, the teaching pyramid, and the third edition of the environment rating scales can work together to support and measure high quality care for infants and toddlers. Continuity of care is one of six relationship-based care practices that work together to set the stage for meaningful relationships between infants and their caregivers. As with our previous webinars, Please allow one hour to view the webinar and complete the associated learning experiences. For this session, you're going to need to download three items, the continuity of care worksheet, the continuity of care rationale paper, and the PowerPoint for this webinar. You'll also need to have your ITERS 3 or your FECRS 3 assessment booklets available. You can click on the handout icon to download links to additional resources which support the content within this webinar. Please pause the recording to gather your materials and then resume the webinar when you're ready. Here are the goals for today's webinar. We'll identify why continuity of care is important for infants and toddlers. We'll share strategies for implementing continuity of care. And we'll explore the connection between the PITC relationship-based care practices, the pyramid model, and the environment rating scales. We'd like to set the stage for today's topic by showing a short video clip. This video comes from the New York State Infant Toddler Resource Network.
Wow. That video delivers some very powerful messages about why continuity of care is important. We want to encourage you to reflect on the messages that were shared in the video throughout today's webinar. Let's engage in a reflection activity now to help us understand why continuity of care is important. We'd like you to think back to a time in your life when you experienced a loss. This may be a loss that you experienced as a child or as an adult. We know that this can be an emotional experience, so please honor your personal needs and boundaries. Avoid bringing up memories that are too raw or too emotional. And if this question is just too difficult for you, please feel free to skip it. Next, we'd like you to recall an experience where you felt a sense of deep belonging. This may be um, from your childhood or adulthood. This might be an experience with friends or family, an experience in school or in a community group. Please pause the recording to complete the learning experience for slide seven and then resume the webinar when you're ready. Welcome back. Thank you for taking time to reflect on these questions. Let's think about how your reflection might connect to continuity of care for infants and toddlers. Babies are developing a sense of who they are and how the world works in their relationships with their significant caregivers. When babies lose a caregiver, they're actually losing a sense of who they are, as well as how they've come to learn to communicate and interact. In relationships, babies learn ways to communicate with their caregivers. They learn how to get their needs met. Together, babies and caregivers develop shared meaning. Shared meaning is this very special way that two people have learned to understand and communicate with each other. For instance, when baby Sarah flaps her arms, her caregiver knows that she wants to be picked up. And when Sarah kicks her feet, her caregivers understand that she needs help. When babies change to a new caregiver, their way of communicating is suddenly not understood. The baby then has to work much harder to communicate and the new caregiver must work much harder to understand the baby's communication. When there is continuity of care and a sense of belonging, the ease of being known and understood is there. This allows both caregivers and babies to use their energy to deepen their relationship rather than struggling to understand each other. Please hold the feelings that came up for you during this reflection in your mind. This can be really helpful to deepen your understanding as to why continuity of care is important for infants and toddlers. Now I'm going to turn it over to Julie to continue sharing why continuity of care is so important. Thank you, Tina. Exploring these important feelings is central to the research behind continuity of care. Continuity of care provides an opportunity for babies to feel and experience a sense of belonging in their relationship with a responsive caregiver. The practice encompasses different strategies designed to lengthen children's ability to continuously participate in a program strengthen early relationships, and support children's development and learning. With continuity of care, the infant toddler caregiver and peer group stay together for at least the first three years of life or the length of enrollment in the child care center or family child care home. The consistency of the continuity of care practice is its strength. We know it takes time for babies to develop a secure attachment relationship with their caregiver. Over months and years, this connection deepens. At the same time, caregivers are also building close bond with the young child's family. With continuity of care, babies experience greater consistency in their daily care routines, a central area for learning, 
which allows them to anticipate and participate more actively in their own care. We have shared a repeated message that relationships are at the heart of infant toddler care. Research clearly tells us for healthy development, you need healthy relationships. Continuity of care provides the container in which the relationship develops and strengthens between a caregiver and a child. Providing emotional support through consistent nurturing care creates a strong sense of security that can buffer the infant from stressful life events. All of this happens because the baby can trust their needs will be met and they will be kept safe from harm. One-on-one -on -one interactions with caregivers help young children regulate emotions, build focus and attention, increase capacity to connect ideas and events and memory. They explore relationships with peers and expand language usage and comprehension. Reflect for a moment on how you support caregivers and family child care providers in being consistent, predictable, and responsive in their interactions with infants and toddlers. If you would like, pause the webinar and jot down some thoughts on the notes section of the worksheet for this session. Resume the webinar once you are ready. Now I will turn it over to Rana to explore strategies to support continuity of care. Thank you, Julie and Tina, for setting that stage. An important thing to realize about continuity of care is that primary caregiving is the foundation of continuity of care. An initial step for implementing continuity of care is determining if primary caregiving is in place and if there's a need to strengthen the primary caregiving model before implementing continuity of care. Once we're sure primary caregiving is in place, child care programs and family child care homes can put practices and policies in place that allow each primary caregiver and the children in their care to stay together for the child's duration in the program or as long as possible. Programs can also support continuity of care by developing policies, in, including those in parent and staff handbooks. By offering training and time for reflection for staff and engaging parents through sharing information and discussion. There are a variety of approaches to continuity of care, and it's important to determine which one is right for the program you are working with. One important way to provide continuity of care is through partnering with families. Pause the webinar and take out your worksheet. In the section for partnering with families on slide 14, list some of the ways programs and caregivers can partner with families to provide continuity of care for their child. Resume the webinar when you're done. Thank you for taking the time to think about the role of families. The pyramid model suggests that there are many ways to communicate daily with families and that programs and providers should build a ritual for drop off and pick up times. Perhaps using a journal that is sent home each evening with one or two comments about the child's day and parents are invited to respond and return it in the morning. We need to help families feel comfortable with sharing information and asking questions. We do this by inviting conversation and using our very best listening skills. We also need to have regular times for uninterrupted meetings, which offer opportunities to hear parents' views of their child and to discuss their goals. It's also helpful to ask for more formal evaluations through surveys periodically. During the face-to-face -face meetings that we schedule, we need to spend more time listening than talking. We want to seek their perspective about their child. We want to ask them many questions about schedules and routines so we can provide continuity during the day. We want to ask families to help us understand their child better. And we want to get to know families as individuals. 
We want to share some personal information, always respecting our boundaries and theirs, and share our observations about their child while listening to their thoughts. When programs are preparing for implementation of continuity of care at the program level, there are many considerations, including how the physical environment will accommodate the ages of the children, what materials and experiences will be available to children, what are the state regulations regarding age groupings and ratios, how will they meet all the developmental needs of the individual children, especially in a mixed age classroom, how will continuity of care impact peer friendships and relationships between both children and adults? How will the continuity of care model impact enrollment? And finally, what professional development will be needed for staff? There are three main programmatic approaches to continuity of care. The first one is the same age group with the same environment. This approach enrolls children within a small age range into one classroom where they remain for three years with the same caregivers and peers. It necessitates modifying the environment as children age and impacts who can be enrolled when there is an opening. The next model, same age group with a different environment. This approach is similar in that children of similar ages are enrolled in one classroom and stay together as a group for their first three years. The major difference is that the group moves to a new environment as developmental needs change. And the third model is a mixed age group with same environment. This third approach enrolls children of all ages in the classroom. This group of children and caregivers remain together in a classroom that includes furniture and materials that meet a variety of developmental levels. As mentioned, all approaches will need to involve family input and staff development. The pyramid model understands that the three approaches may be difficult to implement and recognizes that not all programs are ready for the programmatic commitment to implementing continuity of care. However, if a program is not able to keep children and caregivers together for the first three years and transitions are needed, they should be minimized and supported. All transitions to new environments and new caregivers and groups of children should include a thoughtful approach that allows for a visit to the new space and new caregivers while maintaining a relationship with the current caregiver. Parental involvement in the transition is also critical for success. Now let's turn our conversation to ways caregivers can support continuity of care. Most importantly, primary caregivers build strong relationships with infants and toddlers when they engage in responsive interactions over time. These sensitive and responsive interactions can support babies' development of a sense of security, safety, and trust, which is the key ingredient for secure attachment relationships. Caregivers provide a predictable but flexible daily schedule, which gives continuity from one day to the next, allowing infants and toddlers to predict what will happen next and develop a sense of ease in their environment. Caregivers can minimize the number of transitions during the day. For example, keeping children in the same room with primary caregivers to the greatest degree possible in keeping groups together rather than dividing them up if a caregiver calls in sick and maintains continuity in groups when considering and condensing classrooms at the end of the day. Caregivers can engage in frequent caregiver family conversations in order to support continuity between home and school. For example, caregiving routines, home language, and connecting to what is going on at home. When there are multiple caregivers, for example, two primary caregivers assigned to one child due to schedule needs, or a float or someone that covers breaks or a substitute, caregivers can find ways to communicate information about the care of individual children so that the children experience continuity in how they are cared for. This communication between caregivers could be both written and verbal. One example may be to have a folder or clipboard for each child where essential 
individualized information is kept. This would include schedules, play preferences, and ways to comfort a child when in distress. And it's also helpful to have individualized developmental goals documented in this folder. It's time now to pause here and think about what we've discussed. Please take out your worksheet, pause the webinar, and complete the learning activity for slide 21. Think about what you are already doing to help programs and what you can do to help strengthen continuity of care. When you are done, resume the webinar and we'll share some ideas. Perhaps you responded that you support caregivers and programs in implementing primary caregiving, as this is the foundation for continuity of care. Perhaps you advocate for consistent substitutes when primary caregivers are not available. Additional strategies you may have considered include ensuring there are minimal transitions during the day and during their time in the program, enhanced family engagement, that classroom staff have similar rules and ways to communicate routines, schedules, and expectations. For example, all adults sing the cleanup song when cleanup begins, or children are allowed to bring a small quiet object to their cot for rest time, or infants are held in the same way for feeding and comforting. Often when a change to continuity of care is made, whether it's one of the programmatic approaches we mentioned, or some of the strategies for caregivers, we encounter some staff resistance. We need to recognize that change takes time and the more staff can be involved in planning and preparing for the change, the less resistance you will encounter. So we begin with professional development that includes reflective supervision to give everyone a chance to share their excitement, worries, and thoughts about continuity of care. We support caregivers in developing competencies for working with different age groups, and we appreciate caregivers and encourage professional pride. We understand that change takes time. Implement continuity of care with enthusiastic caregivers who are excited to try it, stop there, and then encourage them to share and celebrate their successes. Celebrate progress and acknowledge everyone's contributions. Be sure to share information about the benefits and listen to the other's perspective. Support planning time for implementation. Preparing for this change is no exception. We always need planning time. Remember, be patient. Rome was not built in a day. When we talk about environment for infants and toddlers, we include the physical, social, and emotional environment of the space. Some ways to address the possible environment limitations include allowing administrative and then classroom staff to visit programs where continuity of care has been successful. Include in these visits opportunities to talk with staff. As mentioned, start small, perhaps implementing one strategy at a time or implementing continuity of care in one classroom at a time. And be sure to use furniture to your advantage in defining the space and be open to change along the way. Now I'll turn it back to Tina to help you think about how the environment rating scales connect to continuity of care. Thank you, Rana. This slide shows the six subscales that are found in the Itters 3 and the Thecker's 3. I'm pretty sure that these are familiar at this point in the webinar series. Now that you understand the practice of continuity of care and understand why it's so important for infants and toddlers, you're ready to review the environment rating scales and identify the items and indicators that can support continuity of care. Let's practice. Here are the instructions for your next learning experience. Select one subscale to review. Read the items and indicators within the subscale that you selected and reflect on how that subscale can support continuity of care. Think about why you selected that particular subscale. 
and identify how you might help caregivers to understand the connection between the subscale that you selected and continuity of care. This activity is going to require a little bit of thought on your part as there really is not an explicit connection linking the environment rating scales to continuity of care. Please pause the webinar to complete the learning experience for slide 26 now and then resume the webinar when you're ready. Welcome back and thanks so much for taking time to complete this learning experience. Were you able to make the connections between continuity of care and the rating scales? Let's look at some examples and potential connections. Perhaps you selected the space and furnishing subscale. Item four, display for children, requires that photographs of children and their families are displayed where children can easily see them. This provides continuity between home and the child care program. Or you may have selected the personal care routine subscale. Item five, meals and snacks, and item six, diapering and toileting, require individualizing and personalizing routines. When caregivers personalize these routines to be consistent with the family's practices and the family's goals, they're providing continuity of care. In the language and books subscale, talking with children requires that caregivers talk with children is individualized. As you know, it's easier to do this when you really know the children and families in your care. In the activities subscale, promoting acceptance of diversity, caregivers are required to recognize and support children's individuality and to provide support for children's temperament tendencies and language, including their home language. Once again, continuity of care allows caregivers to really know and understand children in their care, which makes it easier for caregivers to meet this requirement. You may have selected the interaction subscale. There are several items within this subscale that support continuity of care including that caregivers and providers are able to soothe and support children who are anxious, angry, afraid, or hurt. This secure attachment that comes from continuity of care helps infants and toddlers trust that their caregivers will be there to help them manage their strong feelings and emotions. As mentioned earlier, continuity of care supports attachment between infants and their caregivers. Finally, you might have selected the program structure subscale. In this subscale, item 31, schedule and transitions, require transitions to be individualized for children. Continuity of care helps caregivers to individualize transitions because it allows the caregivers to understand children's individual needs. This enables caregivers to provide predictable routines and transitions which allow children to understand what is expected of them. We've shared several examples, but really just a few examples of how the ITERS 3 and Becker's 3 subscales connect to and support continuity of care. You may have identified different examples. The purpose of this activity was to provide you with an opportunity to practice finding connections between the environment rating scales and continuity of care. Now it's time to pull all this information together. So let's look at the final learning experience for this webinar. In the learning experience for slide 29, we ask you to identify why continuity of care is important for infants and toddlers and to identify two strategies that you would share with caregivers to support continuity of care. We also ask you to consider how the relationship-based care practices in the pyramid model support continuity of care. Please pause the webinar to complete the final learning experience for slide 29, and then resume the webinar for our wrap up. Congratulations. You've completed the fourth webinar in the relationship-based care practice series. 
As always, we thank you for your participation in this webinar and for all the work that you do to support our infant toddler caregivers. We look forward to reconnecting with you in the next webinar where we'll explore the practice of small groups. Thank you and bye.